This is Steppa. Welcome to part two. Continuing on explaining the importance of this dream, we are also reflecting on the same type of issues that were with Israel's people at the time of Moses when Aaron was appointed as an anointed leader. And this sin against uh, turning against God and his anointed, the Lord is very displeased with it. I might attach this article. This explains, I think, some more of it about how the Lord dealt with it. But as you know, you know, there was certain rods all lined up, dead sticks looking all the same. And one of them blossomed, which was Aaron's rod, to show that he was anointed. Now, Aaron's rod, this is the interesting part, it budded with the almond flowers, with almonds and the almond flowers. And this is again in scripture confirming the time of Tu Bishavat, which is the January 31st blue blood moon, the purple eclipse, I like to say was uh, representing the royalty, the purple, representing the combination, representing the royalty anointed and appointed and chosen, selected by God, sealed and not only selected, but sealed at this time, you know. So this is what all my dreams have also been pointing to. This is a time right before the rapture. The rapture can happen at any moment, any second, any day now. Keep watching. And almond means watch. And the name that I was given in my dream to point to this time frame, starting of uh, Aquarius transition through the sun, January 21st till uh, February 20th, the name I was given of the man representing Christ for a union was his name was Gregory, which means watching, watching, watchman, watchful, awake, alert, watching, which again points to Tu Bishavat as well, and the budding of the almond trees. And also, it's in point, it, it, the, what the Lord is trying to say now that my anointed have been selected, sealed, you know, respect the fact that they are operating underneath his anointing this is his choice the lord's will and you're turning against the lord when you turn against his anointed and there's consequence to that okay and this is a sin and it should be repented of because you're going against the will of the lord and if you're not with the lord you're against the lord okay so that's important so what happens here is on to bishavat and now moving forward every day Everyone is being watched and judged, okay? There is, um, in the judgment, the scales of the Lord's judgment, there is his wrath on one side, which brings, ju uh, the judgment brings his wrath, and then there is his mer mercy, forgiveness, and grace. And there is a fine line. There is an unforgivable forgivable sin that I've mentioned in the previous video, in one of my previous videos, if you go look back on what I mentioned in just my last video, is that the unforg unforgivable sin is to grieve the Holy Spirit. And that is also coming against the anointed. So, you know, it, be very careful because there is a fine line and there is law and order and there is positions and authority in the spiritual world, in the kingdom, you know, to come and now. And they've been appointed, and if you disrespect them, you disrespect God, okay? And you're putting yourself in the position of wrath, of judgment, okay? This is weighed, okay, by your heart. The Lord weighs your heart against the judgment, his wrath, okay? And depending on the quality of your heart, he sees things within, he judges the heart and the mind. He will see you what for you for what you really are. So this is a time where we are not to act like Pharisees. 
the body of Christ are not to fall back into their flesh, become jealous of the anointed, and uh, fall into the pride that Satan has laid before them so that they question the authority and put their heart in a position where it is uh, potentially wa uh, found wanton by the Lord and thus bringing the judgment as a foolish virgin onto themselves. I'm going to touch on some scriptures, but I wanted to bring this up. Jeremiah 17.10, the sin and punishment of Judah. Let's start with 9. The heart is more deceitful than all else and is desperately sick. This is the heart that he's judging. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give each man according to his ways. He's, this is a time of testing to Bishavat. Where is your allegiance? Are you coming against the anointed? The anoint, you know, no one is claiming to be infallible, perfect. Only Christ was in the flesh. You know, we will be perfected completely when we are uh, united with him, transformed and united with him by his power and his Holy Spirit, through his uh, uh, blood sacrifice that was given to make way for that, to give power to that, according to the results of his deeds. Okay? This is the deeds being weighed right now. Everything is being uh, witnessed and recorded. And there is a judgment. This is the time of separation of those who are truly for Christ and those who are working against him. And this is one of the ways that the Lord showed as a major way, a major sign, that these people are acting as Pharisees and they're working against him. As a patridge that hatches, uh, oh, sorry, a partridge that hatches eggs which it has not laid, so is he who makes a fortune, but unjustly. In the midst of his days, it will forsake him, and in the end, he will be a fool. Again, this is referring to the foolish virgins for the deceit of their own heart. The lust, the jealousy, the pride. And that's evident in the people who come against the anointed. And again, this in scripture represents, <sighs> was revealed also a hint of, of this happening, um, even among the apostles, with Jesus and his beloved apostles. And this is John 21, that's 21, 21. <laughs> Interesting, 21. You know, how many times we're pointed to that? Plus two, plus plus. 2 plus 1 is 3, which is the Holy, the unity, the, um, God, Father, and Holy Spirit, okay? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Which is speaking of the beloved apostle John. Jesus answered, if I want him to remain until I return, what is that to you? If I want him to do this, if I want him to do that, if I, want, if I appoint him to this task or this end, what is that to you? The Lord is saying, what is that to you? You follow me. What is your task? Because of this, the rumor spread among the brothers that this disciple would not die. However, Jesus did not say that he would not die, but only if I wanted him to remain alive until the re I return. What is that to you? Again, you follow me. Do not come against what I have done. Uh, the Lord is saying, do not come against what I have appointed, what I have anointed, what my will is, you know, and that is a strong rebuke. And again, showing the rebuke of Christ towards Peter, because this is the mentality that he had. He was trying to break through for free from this, uh, you know, deceptive uh, yearning of the flesh, you know, he spoke here of uh, Mark 8, 33. Let's start with 32. He spoke this message quite frankly, and Peter took him. He, he delivered a message, and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. Again, you rebuke the Lord when you rebuke his uh, anointed as well. This is what you have to be careful of. Turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. 
if you are not for Christ, you are against him. It doesn't matter who you are, what position you have. Do not come against Christ and is anointed. You will be considered an adversary. He called even Peter at this moment for this act, Satan. For you do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of man. Again, this is operating not from the spiritual, in, in the Holy Spirit, but from the flesh, the carnal, the desires of men. You see that? And he rebukes even Christ himself. And this is what the Pharisees do. Then Jesus called the crowd to him along with his disciples, and he told them, If anyone wants to come, to, come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So this is what we're called to do. Are you a follower of Christ? Then pick up your cross. Deny your flesh. Respect the anointing. So to show, I want to show from scripture here revealing the selection process 1 Samuel 16 if you get a chance you should read that because it explains how the Lord has um, selected and selects his people and the stipulations that come with that sorry about that so um, I think I'm going to read here from verse 6 and it came to pass when they were come and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature. Well, this is the cardinal, again, physical, because I have refused him. And this is the, the appearance of the Pharisees. This is a touching on how the Pharisees are operating from the flesh. For the Lord seeth not as a man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has, hath the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shema to pass by, and he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. Okay? So, although people in Christ are not seeing what the Lord sees, he has anointed his anointed. He has selected his anointed. He has anointed his selected. And he sent and brought him. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look at, to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. So this is how David was anointed and selected. And he was, you know, seemingly not worthy or nobody that would be considered by the general brethren to be anointed. But what did he do? He was obedient and he was a servant. And he had a servant's heart. He was feeding the sheep, watching the sheep, caring for the sheep. And this is what, this character is what allowed the Lord to use him and want to use him, okay?